You planned your marriage date, but who planned your divorce date? <laughs> Didn't think about that, did you? Yeah, that's what people do. They plan these marriage dates, right? But nobody planned a divorce date. It just occurred some way, somehow down the road. Let me tell you this. What I'm about to tell you right now took me years to learn. I'm going to give you some tips in a few minutes. Business after divorce is one of the things that most people do not plan for, especially poor people. What I have seen, and based on my research that I've done, poor people are at a higher risk of getting a divorce. And more so now, these days, than ever. There's a lot of factors to it. Right? Poor people are easier, easier to influence. They're easier influence, got less resources, less money, okay? Less educated, right? These are just plain old facts. So they're easier to be swayed, easier to fail in a committed relationship because a person is poor, they're trying to get somewhere. And if it's not working here, they'll go over here via influence, via not having enough resources, a lot of different little aspects, nooks and crannies. That's how society is structured and also how some people think philosophically. They look at things and it's not working. They don't worry about the commitment that they have. They just be like, okay, this isn't working. I've had it, I'm out of here. So the business of divorce, after divorce, business after divorce is not something most people plan. The marriage date is set, you know that. But you don't know when the divorce date will be. There's a lot of financial issues that's gonna occur especially to people with the least amount of resources will feel it the most and that's just the finances you also got to look at <clears throat> the emotional toll the psychological impact for the adults the kids if there are kids involved that's another story by itself get what i'm saying so the kids are going to suffer the ex-wife will suffer and also the ex-husband will suffer. So everyone suffers in a divorce except for the court system that makes money, they get paid. Attorneys that makes money, they get paid. They profit off these divorces. All these things are just based on one incident, one occurrence or one emotion that a person has. Just one, not two. So you gotta be extremely careful and know who you're getting involved with. Now, if the relationship works, great. If it works, great. Right? So boom, you get a divorce date. Boom, you got divorced. Say you're just a couple that's just getting by, right? Or you're okay. You're more than getting by. You're okay. A little bit above, somewhere in there. You're not rich. You're just doing okay. Boom, the divorce hits. Let's look at dad over here. What's going to happen to him? Well, based on whatever agreements they have, uh, marital agreements or whatever kids share in this, that, Somebody paycheck is going to dip. More than likely, it's the guy. If it's sheer custody or the mom is the custodial parent, she'll have the kids. Some of his paycheck has to go there to support those kids. Paychecks get a cut. His lifestyle decreases. Some way, somehow. It's just getting by. He's not a rich man. Right? His paycheck decreases. That's one thing. 
okay, now he got a, he still has a need to be a parent. All right? It doesn't mean he is divorced. He divorced the kids, the divorced wife. So he still had a need to be a parent. Now he has to go see those kids. Extra money will be spent. Now you got to support these kids that's not under your roof anymore. Extra money will be spent. You got to maintain a relationship with these kids. Mental anguish will develop on the, um, with the dad over here. Because you'll be like, okay, how am I supposed to do all this when my paycheck already went down? But that's the system. You know what I'm saying? My paycheck already decreased and I'm expected to still be a dad, still do this. And then he's pissed off about what she does with the money. Because ex-wife over here, she has a new man that's using up some of that money too. Depriving the kids in a lot of cases. You understand? So now he gets a new girlfriend. He can't support that girlfriend. Because you don't have enough money. Remember, he's on a fixed paycheck. What does that girlfriend do? She takes off. She'd be like, okay, I, you can't do anything really. We can't go on daily. She can't be bothered with him. He looks good, nice guy, whatever, but she's off. He'll try this over and over, and multiple women will be, they can't bother with that shit because it's nothing in there for them. You understand what I'm saying? These are some of the things that the man will go through. Look at over here and side of the, of the mother, the ex-wife. She, she's going through shit too. It don't mean she has the kids, everything is okay. She, she's going to date. You understand what I'm saying? She's going to date. Probably have different men around those kids. Right? Who come and go as they please. Nobody's taking her serious. She's stressed out, frustrated. Kids care. She got to do kids care because she has a lot of work to do. Because she, now she got to basically raise those kids on her own. So she's emotionally drained also. Emotional toll. She's an emotional toll. Right? What are the things she's lacking? Okay, she's not getting consistent love that she used to have over here from him. It's just this hit or miss guys or mo modern guys who don't cater to other men's kids. That's what she's running into. You understand? She got to use all the whatever she gets for child support, alimony or whatever. She got to use that to take care of everything by herself. Overwhelming. Right? These are some of the businesses after divorce that a lot of people don't talk about. They're like, yeah, I'm just going to move on and that's it. It sounds easy, but it's not easy. It's not that easy. It doesn't matter. Like I said, poor people are at a higher risk of getting a divorce. It don't matter what way you look at it. Then you could do the research on your own. There's a lot of businesses going on. Okay, what about the kids that most people don't pay attention to? They only care about their own happiness after the divorce. The kids can't see either mom or dad, whatever custodial goes, as often as they would like. It's affecting the kids mentally because they're seeing their other friends or with their dads or with their moms and they don't have that luxury, but they do have a mom. They do have a dad. They know that person exists. But they're not getting the luxury of that parent. You understand what I'm saying? These are some of the things that divorces will do. The judge got paid. Attorneys got paid. The court system got paid. But the impacts and effects of the divorce will linger on to affect every single one involved especially the kids 
A lot of times their living situation may be unstable. Right? Constantly being introduced to different men all the time because mom is going to date. You understand what I'm saying? So who really wins in a divorce? What's the benefit of a divorce really? Like for two people who are just, you know, just getting by. There's no winning in it. It's a lose-lose for everybody. A lot of these divorces I see these days, most of the times are for no solid reason than either party are just fed up with what? Most of the times, nothing serious. They just say to themselves, you know what, I, I could do better. And they'll just leave the relationship and think, okay, I could just leave and I'll start over tomorrow and things will just play out. It ain't going to be like that. I could tell you that right now. Right? So there's a lot of business. A lot of business after divorce. Okay? A lot of things that you got to look at. A lot of things that you got to consider. And look at the micro economy, economy factor of stuff. And you will get a closer look of how it will impact emotionally, financially, and more so parenting. Divorces affect parenting big time. Now these kids are growing up. Okay, they're with their dad. They're not seeing their mom every other weekend or they got shared custody 50-50. They're not seeing the full scope of what their mom does because the dad has custody. The mom has custody. They're not seeing the full scope of what their daddy does because the, the, the mom has custody. So they're not getting the full influence of the other parent, which will affect them some way, somehow. And they could grow out to be good kids. I'm not saying they, they, they weren't. They, they will not. But it will affect them because they know that other parent is alive. These are some of the things you're going to consider. You understand what I'm saying? And like I said, everyone plans the marriage date, but no one plans the divorce date. No one plans for that. I don't think anyone got married like, you know what, I'm going to get divorced in the next year and a half, two years. But look at what you occurred during the marriage. Look at all the financial entanglement that you created with your spouse, husband, wife. When you get a divorce, it's not going to entangle itself. You got to entangle it. And you will be left in shambles. Yeah, you will be left in shambles. Even if you have money, it's going to affect you emotionally. Long term, it will. You understand? There's no right way or left way to go about it. You just got to go about it. But it's something you may want to consider and keep in mind. The business after divorce and how will it impact you your spouse, the kids. A lot of times people get selfish. They don't care about the other party. They're just concerned about themselves because now they're getting a divorce. They become enemies and don't realize that they're still parents that share the responsibility of kids. That's something you got to tend to and take care of. Right? Then they get these attorneys and, oh, I got my attorney. Attorneys are, are not, family attorneys are not at war. As is you and your spouse or ex-wife or soon-to-be ex-husband. Family attorneys and family, they're not, at, they're not at war. They're about family and ensuring the safety of kids. So get it out of your head. I got my lawyer. My lawyer said that. Get that out of your head. They eat lunch together, probably hang out on the weekends. And they talk about your case. That's what attorneys do. You don't know that. You know what I'm saying? They talk about your case. They probably made the decision how they're going to do it in the best interest of the kids over lunch somewhere. Yeah. 
So attorneys, family law attorneys are not at war. They're at business. More concerned about the interests and well-being of the kids, which most people aren't concerned about during a divorce. Selfishly just thinking about themselves and how best they can hurt the other person that they're about to be exes with. That's what most people think. How can I hurt him or her the best way? Getting out of this divorce. That's how they look at it. There's no, okay, this has ended. Let's just amicably move on. It, most of the times that's not the case. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It do happen where people amicably move on. But most cases, it's a blood sport getting out of that relationship. Because their emotions and those emotions will roll over into new relationships. Because most people don't think they need time or headspace to clear themselves, uh, you know, get rid of the emotional baggage. They don't think they need that. They'll just move from bed to bed, as I spoke about in previous videos. And they got all that emotional baggage, right? They'll just roll into the next relationship with the emotional baggage, not realizing that they're now going to impact and affect that innocent person who you now have a relationship with. They don't realize they're going to impact and hurt that person because you're steady talking about your past and they didn't create a relationship with you to listen up to your past every single night in bed what your ex-husband did, what your ex-wife did. They didn't, they didn't get in a relationship with you for that. They got in a relationship to enjoy life. You understand? So this is something you want to consider also. You might want to think about that. The business after divorce. It can be very dirty. It's a dirty game. It can be extremely dirty. You understand? Divorces have caused people to lose their minds, like completely lose it. Right? You could lose your job, especially if you live in America or some of these countries with very strict like credit systems and that. Because say, for example, you work in some type of government job or a state job or your accountant or whatever. A lot of these jobs require to have like great credit based on the position you have. You get a divorce, your credit is shot. Your job don't care that your credit is shot. It'd be like, yo, you can't hold this job. Your credit is bad. You can't be working on finances when your finances are in shambles. There are jobs like that. So boom, you lose your job. You lost your husband or wife. Okay, now you got all this shit that you, you're losing a lot. You lost your house or home. You lose the luxuries of your kids. You understand? Some people lose their mind. They start to drink, smoke. It takes all types of bullshit, which I recommend you don't do. This is the reason why during a lot of court systems, they'll ask you if you need counsel, this, that, whatever. Take advantage of those because there are resources there that could help you to patch up and fix different things and shit like that. Right? So you could lose your entire soul, your identity because of a divorce. The business thereafter. People don't talk about that shit. All they talk about is getting married. Time, place, date, favorite dress, favorite tuxedo, best man, bride, groom, all this other shit is deeper than that. You'll never know when it's coming knocking at your door. And it could happen by one simple thing that you decided to do or not do. Be careful out there. Know what you get it into. If it's working, it's working. Make it work. And if it can't work, get out safely and take care of the kids. This is Big Muscle. 
I stay on the hustle. Catch me in the next video. Peace.